Alright, so this video is about the double dare example. In particular, we're going to look at how the double dare example fits into the concepts of decision analysis. We're going to look at building decision tree for the double dare example. In particular, what we're going to be doing with the decision tree is where do we have decisions, where do we have uncertain events, and how do the uncertain events lead to new states of the problem where we have more decisions to make. We'll then look at how we can use the decision tree to essentially build up what our optimal decision is in each state, but essentially calculating the expected value to affect the payoffs of each of the various nodes in the decision tree. So if you haven't read the Double Dare example, I'd encourage you to read it at this stage. So we'll kind of get started. The first thing we need to kind of determine is what's essentially the starting node or the root node of our decision tree. In the Double Dare example, we're the controlling team. So basically, the first decision we have to make is once the host asks us our question. So our first node, which we'll label node A, is a decision node. So we'll have node A. And when the host asks us the question, we have two options. We can answer, or we can dare the other team to answer. So we have essentially two branches leaving this decision node. So Remember, kind of, if we have at a decision note, we're going to have a branch for each possible decision alternative. So we have two branches. We have the answer branch, and then we also have the dare branch. Now we need to figure out what type of nodes do each of these branches lead to. Uh, if I'm at the answer branch, if I go along the answer branch. I have an uncertain event that dictates kind of the outcome of answering. I'm not 100% sure that we are, as the controlling team, we're not 100% sure that we know the right answer. So the chance event or the event that will take place is, did we get the answer right or not? So we'll add in a node, and we'll call it node B. And this is going to be a chance node, so we're going to use a circle to denote it. And then from the chance node, there are two possible outcomes. And so from chance nodes, we basically are event nodes. We have a branch for each possible outcome. So we either get the question right or we get the question wrong. Now, if we get the question right or wrong, it's essentially a terminal branch. Because if we get uh, the question right or wrong, it ends kind of the the dealing with that question or the round attached to that question. So these are both terminal branches, so we can write down what their payoffs are. And so if we get it right at this stage, we get $100. And if we get it wrong, we get a payoff of minus 100. And the reason why we get a payoff of minus 100 is because the other team receives a payoff. So it's essentially like we're losing $100 to them. So actually, if we look now, for the answer branch, we have kind of created the resulting decision tree once we select the answer branch, or once we go down the answer branch. So we're done kind of with the top of the decision tree. We now can focus on what results from the dare decision. So for the dare decision, we need to figure out, well, does it event lead to another decision node, or does it lead to an event node or a chance node? Now, Looking at the dare, we don't necessarily know the actions of our opponent. And basically what we've kind of assumed is that we've watched them enough to know that they only answer questions when they know the right answer. And if they don't know the right answer, they're going to double dare it back to us. So if we look at it or kind of be thinking about that, the actions of the opponent are unknown to us. So they're an uncertain event. So we'll have another chance node. Label this chance node. C, and there are essentially now two outcomes. Either the other team answers, and then they'll get it right, or they double dare it back to us. So if the other team answers, so we're going to just kind of use other team, OT, answers, we can kind of ask ourselves, is this a terminal branch? Where does this lead? Well, if the other team answers, they're going to get it right. That's kind of what we've assumed. So we have a negative payoff. And now since we've dared, the value of the question had doubled. So we have a payoff of minus 200. 
Other team can double dare, so the other kind of event or other outcome of this event is a double dare. So now the other team's double dared it back to us. We face another decision. We need to determine do we answer or do we accept the physical challenge? So we'll have a decision node, we'll call it capital D. And we have two branches leaving it, right? We have two possible decision alternatives to select from. We'll have two branches. We either answer or we accept the physical challenge. So if we, <clears throat> if we answer, there's an uncertain event that's going to occur. We don't know if we're going to get it right. We don't know if we're going to get it wrong. So we have to incorporate another event or chance node. So we'll incorporate this by node E. And then we'll look at the two outcomes. We either get it right. And now, since it's the, the question's been double dared back to us, getting it right is worth 400. So our payoff in this situation is 400. And then if we get it wrong, we get a negative payoff, right? Because we're giving the other team 400, so our payoff is negative 400. And then for the physical challenge, we end up with a, another chance node, right? We do not know the outcome of the physical challenge. We have a certain probability of winning the physical challenge, a certain possibility of failing or losing the physical challenge. So if we win the physical challenge, we get a payoff of 400. And then if we lose the physical challenge, we get a payoff of minus 400. And this is actually kind of the end of our decision tree. We kind of determined all the terminal branches. And we're actually ready to start determining what our optimal sequence of decisions are. Now, the way we are going to do this is basically what we need to do is <clears throat> For each decision node, we need to look at the expected payoffs of each of the nodes attached to the branches leaving that decision node, and we're going to select the one with the highest value to us. So in order to do this, what we can start is we can start with the rightmost nodes in our decision tree and start building the payoffs backwards and the decision optimal decisions backwards. As an example, in order to know what I'm going to do at node A, I need to know the expected payoff of node B and node C. In order to know the expected payoff of node C, I need to know the payoff of D, etc. So that's why it makes sense to kind of go from right back to left. <clears throat> so the one thing that we haven't kind of labeled yet with the decision tree is some of the parameters associated with the uncertain events. So one nice thing about the decision tree is it's flexible. We can put in as much information as we want on the branches. So let's label the branches from the um, event nodes or the chance nodes with their probability of occurring from that event. So kind of I'm going to label these with red. So getting the answer right from event node E, we have a 60% chance. So the probability of occurring is 0.6. Probability of getting it wrong is then 0.4. And then we said that there's a, we kind of believe that we have a 75% percent chance of winning the physical challenge. So the win branch from node F has a 0.75 occurring, and then the lose has a 0.25. And then just for the right and wrong from E and B, they're the same. We have the same kind of probability of getting the answer right whenever we choose to answer. So the probability of the right node up here is 0.6, and the wrong node is 0.4. The last thing we need to label are kind of the probabilities of uh, the event node, the, the events leaving, sorry, the outcomes leaving event node C. And we said that we believe there's a 40% chance that the other team knows the answer. So the probability of this event occurring is 0.4, this outcome occurring from that particular event, and then for the double dare is 0.6. And from there, this is what we need to essentially start building the expected outcomes. So for node E, I'm going to use uh, blue to represent the expected payoffs of each of the nodes that we're going to calculate. We can now take 
B, we can figure out the expected payoff of node E and node F to know what decision we're going to implement. So if we look at the expected payoff of node E, the expected payoff is 0.6 times 400 minus or plus 0.4 times minus 400. Um, so what we can essentially be doing at this stage is taking 20% of 40, so the expected payoff is 80 at this node. Um, and then we can look at the expected payoff of Winning, so we're taking the expected payoff of, sorry, expected payoff of the physical challenge, where we can use the same formula. I mean, we're basically taking 75% of 400 and adding that to 25% of negative 400, so the payoff of node F is 200. And then we can look at, for decision node D, which decision leads to a higher expected payoff. So at decision node D, we can get a payoff of 200, and this results by accepting the physical challenge. And then kind of building back, we can look at node C, or event node C, and we can now determine the expected payoff of event node C. I know the payoff of the nodes, each node, that each branch, essentially I know the payoff of each branch leaving node C. So, I have a 40% chance of getting minus 200. I have a 60% chance of getting 200. So we're looking at essentially taking 20% of, um, of 200 to get the, the payoff here. So the formula, again, really the same as this formula. Our formula is 0.6 times 200 plus 0.4 times minus 200. And so this is equal to 40. So we have a expected payoff node C of 40. The last, now I can want to determine, I want to determine the decision node A. I need to know the payoff of both, of all the nodes that are, um, that result in branches from node A. So I still need to calculate the expected payoff of node B. So if we look, the expected payoff of node B is $20. So 0 0.6 times 100 plus 0 0.4 times minus 100 gives us 20. And what this means is the expected payoff of node A is the larger of these two, so it's 40, and that results from daring. So basically what this kind of tells us is we can get an expected payoff of 40, we can get the expected payoff by daring, and then if we end up in event node D, taking the physical challenge. So, <coughs> so we kind of analyze this problem. We know what we would do given these probabilities. So, okay, that's it for this particular example. All right, bye.